Hi guys, uh, so this is the second movie in this series about flash making HTML5 canvas documents. In the first one I kind of showed you a, a finished example here and uh, talked about some of the caveats that go on. Um, you noticed that uh, I had a, a number of movie clips that I uh, placed on the stage and all of those guys just appear. So on frame one, uh, frame one's content is here. If we go over to frame two, you can see its content is off to the side. Um, frame three and and frame four. Um, you know, there's a number of ways you can do this. If you remember the the Jill um, site from from Lynda.com, they they have the animation occur directly on the main timeline. Through experimenting today, I just could not get that to work um, competently with HTML5, and I don't know if it's just an issue with Flash's output or whatever, um, but when um, I used a, a go to and play rather than a, a go to and stop, Flash seemed to just kind of not behave properly, and that, that could very well be my incompetence with the tool right now with using um, JavaScript rather than ActionScript, which I'm much more familiar with. But, you know, that said, you can easily set up movie clips and have the movie clip play out and just have it all on a single frame and then have your navigation on, um, on that frame as well. So that's kind of what I opted for with these singular movie clips. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you over to the same um, setup. If I, if I come back out here, I've got everything placed just like before, but I don't have any code. If we look at the actions here, there's no code for this. If I come over to the complete one, you'll notice that there's a, a number of, of lines of code. Um, for all of these parts. Now what's interesting about this is it seems like a lot of code but all the code I put in I got just from uh, code snippets. I didn't write um, any code myself I just found the code in code snippets and for this simple project you can do the same and in fact you could just use this start file um, and build it out much the same way. So uh, I'm going to just start populating this with code. So I think the first thing we'll do is I'm going to click just on frame one here and we'll open up code snippets. And in here you'll notice that there's two types of code snippets. Since we're working in HTML5 Canvas, that's what we'll be using. Um, there's all kinds of different ones. Click to go to a web page so that you could do a banner ad this way. Um, but the ones that we'll be using are just two here. Stop at this frame and click to go to frame and stop. Those will be the two lines of code that we're putting in. So the first thing I'm going to do is start up with that. So um, double click on stop on this frame. You'll notice on the actions layer it adds this line of code. Let me explain how this reads. Anything in gray here is a comment. That means that the compiler, or the in this case it would be um, the, the web browser that's reading the script, um, doesn't look at anything that's gray like this. So whenever you see um, this setup with, with the slash, asterisk, asterisk, slash, that is a comment. And then we have this stop, meaning this frame, we're going to stop operations. Um, and in fact, let me, before we do that, let me just run this so you can see what it looks like without anything, without any code added at all. So we run it and it's just sitting there flying. We don't see any of those objects coming in and if I click on the buttons there's nothing happening. Okay. Alright, so coming back here into Flash, let's um, stop at this frame. So I just double click on it and it adds it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put in code for each one of these buttons. Now you'll notice that these buttons are actually movie clips that I made. Um, and I named the instances. Now when you're naming instances, this is true of ActionScript as well as JavaScript, make sure that you use one 
a full name, you don't use spaces, so use underscores or um, dashes if you need something that seems like a space. Or you can use camel case, where this would be a capital B, for example. Also, don't put numbers at the start of this. So start at alpha, and, and if you need numerics, put the uh, numerics somewhere in the middle. Don't use any special characters for it. Just leave it all basic. So you'll notice that anything that I need to talk to Flash about, I've named. So as I'm clicking through these, notice that each one of them has a name. So I'm going to just click on each one of these buttons, and I'm going to double click, click to go to frame and stop. That adds onto the same layer, um, on the same frame, this new bit of code. This is a listener. Um, it's listening for a click, and it's specifically it's the but home button that's listening for this. Listens for a click, and then if it finds a click, it's going to go run this function. It just comes up with these function names um, kind of sequentially. You could rename these make something else if you wanted. Um, if you were to rename this, you'd need to rename the function definition down below too, so it would be the same. Now you'll notice that it says here that when you're when you're doing these guys, you have to um, change the number that it's going to. And it also makes a point to say that EaselJS, which is kind of the um, API that Flash is using to write JavaScript, um, frame start at frame zero rather than one. So since we're clicking on the home button, we want it to go to frame one or in JavaScript language, that would be zero. Okay, so we have that. We'll click back on the stage, go to ducks. Ducks is going to take us to um, frame two on the timeline. That will be this guy. Um, and again, I'm just going to make sure that ducks is selected. Click to go to frame and stop. Adds another one. You notice it dumps in five again. This time I'm going to just put in one, which is frame two in Flash, but uh, it's noted as frame one in JavaScript. Geese. And it's just going to be frame two. And again, notice that each one of these, it keeps putting in the comments. I'm just going to leave them there for right now. You could delete all the extra comments if you wanted. For right now, I'm just going to leave them so you can see that I'm not really altering any code except the frame numbers. Okay, and chicks. So here's chicks. Click to go to frame. And if you kind of forget where you were, just double check. One, zero, one, two. So this one will be frame three. This is another advantage of just putting them sequentially on the timeline and letting little movie clips take care of it is that uh, it's a lot easier to remember this stuff. So I just put in these little click and go to frame and stop and that's that. Um, now the next part that we need to do is we need to adjust these little movie clips. So here's my little rabbit movie clip. This guy um, I'm going to put in a stop. So you can see I've removed it. So I'm coming here to the end. If, if I kind of look at where it is, here's how it animates and lands on the stage. At the very end, I'm just going to stop at this frame. Puts that in. Notice that it's put it on the bunny. So the, there's a timeline for the movie clip bunny MC as well. And that allows that motion to zoom in and stop. We'll come back out to scene one. I'm going to do that with the sky. Notice I named it sky MC, so I double click on it, click on its layer. I'm going to choose stop at this frame as well, so it adds that first sky. Come back. We'll do this for the pond. I named that. Now I, technically I wouldn't have to name it just to put in a stop in there, but I'm going to actually talk, use that in a little bit. So we'll just leave those names in there. So I double click on that. Notice that there's the animation for this, the pond. Again, I, I click on the last frame. It can either be in the actions layer or the pond layer. Um, Flash will figure this out. Put in a stop adds it there. We see that. And now I'm going to go back and just put it in for the other elements. 
So to get to the other elements, I'll just advance a frame. And here's the one for the duck. Zoom out. You'll notice that the last frame of the animation for the duck is with it in place. Click on either one of those guys. Double click stop at this frame. You can see it, it becomes a little, um, there's, there's a formula to it. You get used to it once you, once you determine the formula. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and some of these are a little far out. So here we go. And there's the geese. The geese one rolls in. Click on that last frame, stop, and one more. We finish with chicks. Chicks starts out with an alpha of zero, so it's invisible, but if I double click on it, it opens up. Select these guys, stop, come back out. Um, by the way, I like this little setup for actions. Um, instead of showing it all the time, I click the little double arrows here, so it becomes a button. So when I need it, I can click on it. If I click away, it just closes up. It's very nice. Um, the other advantage of doing this, instead of putting everything on the timeline and, and mapping it out on the timeline, is let's say I want the ducks to fade in more slowly. I can grab this last little keyframe and drag it out a bit. And I just need to make sure I drag out the action script as well, because I don't want it to stop halfway through. And now, when this fades in, it'll take a little bit longer to fade in and stop. That's an easy way to make that adjustment without it being on the main timeline and having to wrestle with that. Okay, so we've got those guys set up. Now, let's run it and, and see what happens. So I'm just, um, I'll zoom in a little bit, and I'll go ahead and press command return. All right, so now we got the little bunny showing up. Now if I click on ducks, it shows that. Click on geese, it comes in. Chicks, that fades in, see it came in slower. But I've got this problem. When I click again, now all these guys are, nothing's happening. So it worked once, and if I reload it, it works again. But why is that happening? Well, I'll tell you, we stopped that movie clip. When we played the movie clip the one time, we stopped it. And that puts it into this stop state. And then when it comes back to it, instead of at least sitting there on the stage at the end, it's, it's stopped back on its beginning frame. So we have to make just a slight adjustment. So I guess we are writing a little bit of code here. So I'm going to um, show you the code. We'll jump back in here. I'm going to open up the code, and the code is going to be on this first frame. So, on the first frame here, we're, we're again looking at these different codes, and you can tell the easiest thing to do is just look at the button that we're trying to go to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell these guys to play these movies again. So, this, we're talking about the stage. What's on the stage? Well, Bunny MC is on the stage. I'm putting in a dot just so that I'm giving Bunny MC a command. I'm going to tell it to play. And I'm going to copy this line and put this in for these other frames. And I'll put in duck. So I have to remember what I named those. These, these names have to match what you see in properties. So you have to name your instances and then you have to make sure that they match, including case, um, in here so that it works. So this is the one for geese. So I'm just going to swap this out so it's going to be geese MC. This is another reason why you want to come up with a naming convention and stick to it because it's easier when you're trying to do this kind of stuff. And finally, chicks, MC. So what this does is this resets these guys and makes them play again when we go to those frames. There's an internal stop in the movie and then we, when we go to the frame we tell it to play one more time. So it'll play until it hits that stop again. So let's see if we're lucky here. I'll go ahead and press command return. All right, we get it the first time. We'll cycle through. Here's our ducks, geese, 
chicks. Good. Now if I click on them again, notice ducks, home, all of those guys are working again. And they'll keep on working. So you just have to remember, um, since you're using movie clips, you have to re-trigger those movie clips. Now let's say I wanted the sky and the pond to run again too. Uh, that might seem kind of um, strange to have to have it run twice. You know, it's kind of nice to have the initial setup. Um, but if we wanted it to run again, if you clicked on home, then you just add plays for those guys. So we'll just do that. Come back, open up actions. For the frame for home, I'm just going to put in two more lines. This, I'll just copy those lines. I named the sky, sky underscore MC, and the pond, pond underscore MC. All right, I'll test this out. Go to one of these guys, go back to home, and now it runs those animations again. So this is the cool thing about being able to do this, is that I can talk to these movie clips and tell them to play again. You can also tell them to go to a particular frame. If you had a game and you had um, different states of your character, let's say you had a movie clip with a character and you had a running loop in there and then you had another one where he falls down, you could trigger those different states and tell that movie clip which state to be on. Um, so that's that's kind of a cool thing. Now let me show you one little problem that I was coming across, and it took me a while to figure it out. Um, in Flash, when I name these guys, oh, by the way, I'll just comment these out. So again, to comment them out, I'm just going to hit backslash, asterisk, and then asterisk, backslash. You just always want to check. It turns gray, everything else around it stays whatever color it was. So now these guys won't run and it'll just trigger Bunny instead. But let me show you the problem that I was having. Um, I had come in when I originally set this up, I had typed this out as Ducks MC Play. Now, this is an example of where you get a compiler error if this was action scripted it'd tell you it can't find ducks MC and then you go oh you know what I probably mislabeled it but um, JavaScript isn't so nice so watch what happens when I play it and we've got this bug all right it opens up and the first time it plays because I'm just telling it to go to that frame and play and it plays it and geese runs chicks runs if I go back to geese, it plays. If I go back to home, it plays. But if I go to ducks, nothing happens. It's calling that, that movie clip to run, but there isn't a movie clip with that name. So it just sits there and says, great, well, run movie clip. And if the movie clip doesn't run, it doesn't throw an error. So this is an example where JavaScript not getting any errors is kind of a pain in the neck. Um, but uh, you just have to kind of come through. I, I, what I ended up doing is I checked what I was naming these guys. Um, so it's not that button. Um, I need to find the actual movie clip. So here is the duck movie clip over on the side. Click on it and it's duck MC instead of ducks. So if I open that up, go to the scenes frame here. I'm going to just Oops, let's get rid of the S, run it again. So we go to ducks, it works the first time, and it works the second time. So anyway, if this is interesting to you, um, and I hope it is because it's the future of Flash, really. If, if you want to make stuff that's going to be for mobile devices, start learning some kind of thing that makes HTML5. It doesn't necessarily have to be Flash, but geez, you might as well. You're learning all these other animation systems inside of it. And again, Adobe's doing a nice job getting this to output. Now, sure, it's putting it into this kind of just a little box on the stage. But this box, you could actually open up in Dreamweaver and reset this and put this inside of a div tag and have it live in a, a different way. It doesn't always have to be in the upper left-hand corner. But that's more of a web design thing. Leave that for that class. Anyway, I hope that these two movies that I've gone over kind of give you an idea of, of how, um, how these 
things work. Some of the caveats you run into with Flash and um, HTML5. And uh, in any case, I, I hope that it's, you find it useful. Let me know if you have questions.